The restaurant scene in London has changed over the last 30 years. It is incredible, and I think that's due to knowledge. Our customers now, and, and people in general, are far more knowledgeable about what they're eating. And they're demanding as well, wanting to know where the food comes from, which I think is great because it means that we're, we're raising the bar even more and far more conscious as a chef of what we are putting on the plate. My desert island cookbook of choice would be Escoffier's. It's the, it's the Bible, I think, of French classic cuisine, and still relevant a hundred years on. Got it. If I had a food truck, I would be serving Coque Monsieur, but I would make it more relevant, so with some funky ingredients in, maybe some you know, seaweed chutney and smoked ham. I think that would work really well with the blue cheese on top. So yeah, I would go to town and I would really, really go crazy in my food truck. I think the next trend in food uh, could be South American flavors. I think there's so much there yet to be discovered. So many different ingredients and so many different flavors. I've tasted kangaroo, crocodile, snake, puffin. I've ate some very bizarre and strange things, all of which were okay. But one of the most weirdest and one of the most mm, challenging things I've ever ate uh, was fermented shark. I'm one that will always say, you've got to taste it and make your own mind up. The tin was bloated, you open it up and the juices and the gas escapes. It really is horrible. Even with copious amounts of Aquavit, it was a challenge. I remember years ago, uh, when I was in Sydney, uh, taking a seaplane to go to a restaurant and uh, going there for lunch, enjoying lunch so much, I stayed for dinner and actually stayed the night there because it was too late, couldn't get back. <laughs> Barrara Waters in, I think. I don't know if it still exists. I think the moment that I realized that I wanted to be a chef was when I was playing under the table of a professional kitchen as a maybe two or three year old. My father gave me a piece of puff pastry to play with instead of Play-Doh. I've always wanted to be a chef, ever since I was a, a, you know, a young, young boy. Nothing, can't think of ever doing anything else other than I do really love long distance running. I love it with a passion. So maybe in another life, I'd give Mo Farah a run for his money. I think the only ingredient that I could not do without would be quality salt whether it's rock salt or sea salt, just quality salt. It's very difficult to buy a good Kuningaman in London uh, because it's actually quite difficult to make. It, it's, a, it's a really tricky technique. Um, but there are a couple of places that sell them. I love Lyon. I've worked there for a couple of years and it's, it's, it's one of the cities in, in France that, that, that is just all about food, I think. There is one restaurant at the moment that is the place to go and eat in Lyon and I will never be able to get a table there again if I tell you. But I will tell you, it's Monsieur P. Go there, it's amazing. My earliest travel memory with my family uh, was definitely uh, going to Scotland. And I was probably around eight, nine at the time. And I remember how it was so, so cold. I absolutely loved living and working in Hong Kong. As a chef that had never experienced that style of food, uh, it, was, it was mind blowing. 
But even more mind-blowing was actually living in a tiny little room at the top of a tower block uh, in Aberdeen and taking the number 70 bus every morning uh, to go into, into town and to be immersed in all of that. And I would urge every chef to travel when they're young and live it. Thank you.